Hi there, my name is Miss Townsend and I love math. Welcome to Math with Townsend. This video is video number four of the solutions package to the practice material given to grade nine students to prepare them for the June EQAO. Let's see where we were. So we now need to work on question 23. It says the area of a square is between 5,000 centimeters squared and 7,500 centimeters squared. Which value could be the length in centimeters of one side of the square? So apparently this looks like a pretty easy question. You know that the area of a square is length times width. So in fact, if the length is 50 and the width is 50, I can just do 50 squared. 50 times 50 is 2,500. And that's too small to fit into my range, so it's not A. Now, if the square was 60 by 60, 60 times 60, or 60 squared, is 3,600. Nope, not big enough. Keep going. 70 times 70, still not big enough. 80 times 80, 6,400 square centimeters. So the answer must be D. Pretty straightforward, I hope. Just multiplying a side length to find the area of a square. Question 24. Tom uses fencing to create a rectangular horse enclosure. He uses the side of a barn as one of the sides of the enclosure. He has 48 meters of fencing to use for the three sides of his enclosure. So we're only putting fencing on three sides. So it's not an optimization question like we would normally do in class. All we have to do is figure out which set of dimensions will use the entire 48 meters. So for example, in A, if the width is eight and the length is six, so this would be eight, six, and this would be another eight meters. Well, if that's his fencing, he's only used 14, 22 meters. It says which set of dimensions will use the entire 48. Again, this is only 22, so it's not A. Kind of an interesting question, because if you read it correctly, all you have to do is just add. So what if the width is 12 and the length is 12? Well, then 12 plus 12 plus 12, 12 plus 12 plus 12 is only 36 meters, not the 48 meters we need. Next one, what if the width is 24 and the length is 12? So 24 plus 12 plus 24 again. So that would be 60, that's too much. So I really hope the answer is D. What if the width is 12 and the length is 24? So let's see, 12 plus 24 plus 12, yep, that's 48 meters, so the answer is D. So don't just assume that somehow you have to take something that looks like a square. This is not an optimization question. It's just a question involving perimeter. And even if it was an optimization question, remember, when you optimize against a barn or some sort of fourth wall that is not a fence, the answer is not a square. An optimized rectangle is only a square if all four sides are constructed out of fencing. So just keep that in mind. Okay, 25, what is the, angle, what is the size of angle X? So I like to have a red pen available and really make sure I highlight the angle we're talking about. So here it is. So this is the angle that I need to know the measure of. So what do I know about it? Well, I know that it's within a triangle. I know that it's also part of a 90 degree angle with whatever this is. So let's highlight that one. So whatever this green one is, let's call it Y so it has a name. So I know that X plus y equals 90 degrees. So if I could find y, then I could say that I had found x. So what's the measure of y? Well, we know that this top feature here, okay, so what we know is that there is a four-sided object that looks like this. And that four-sided object has a 90-degree angle here, a 90-degree angle here, a 125-degree angle here, and therefore this angle must be, doo -doo 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 -doo, so they all add to 360, so 90 plus 90 
plus 125 is equal to 360. And therefore, oops, I forgot something kind of significant. 90 plus 90 plus 125 plus this, which I'm going to call Z, is 360. Four-sided shape, sum of the angles is 360. And therefore, Z must be 55 degrees. Now, what you'll notice is 125 plus 55 is 180. Therefore, we have a C rule come into effect. And because of the C rule, we know that we have parallel lines, which means that this top shape is a parallelogram. And therefore, angle Y is also 55 degrees, which means if I think about my original statement, that the green angle and the red angle must be 90, then I can say that X plus 55 equals 90, and therefore x equals 35 degrees. And I want you to keep in mind a couple things. One of them is that diagrams are never intended to be measurable. So you're never intended to take out a protractor and measure. However, diagrams are intended to be reasonable. So in other words, you know, this angle here, you know, reasonably looks like 35 degrees. Um, it's definitely less than half of this 90 degree angle, right? So, so think about if your answer makes sense in the context of what you're given. It doesn't mean you can measure it, but it does mean, obviously, if I got an angle of, you know, 75, I know I've done something wrong. Next question, 26. Alex's rose shop makes up bouquets and charges for the vase, plus a cost per rose. The shop charges $32.85 for a bouquet of 12 roses, and the shop charges $50.85 for a bouquet of 20 roses. Um, I'm going to see if I can get rid of that message. Okay. Oh, okay. Hopefully everything's good. What does Alex's rose shop charge for a vase? Now, what I want you to do is look at this information. There's a charge for the vase. So you buy a bunch of roses and you get a vase plus a cost per rose. Now we know that the word per generally means we're talking about slope. So the charge of getting a bouquet is the vase plus a certain amount of money per rose. So when you go and buy roses, you pay for one vase and you pay for however many roses you got. In other words, this is a linear relationship because there is a slope and a flat rate. So how am I going to find that relationship? Well, it would probably be obvious to you if we set up a table of values instead of a bulleted sentence structure. If n is the number of roses and c is the cost, then I can organize my information like this. 12 roses costs 32.85 and 20 roses costs 50.85. If the information was presented to you like this, you would probably instantly think, hey, I have two points and I can find the equation of the line. But because it's written in a more paragraph way, sometimes your brain doesn't let you make this jump. So please make sure you make this jump that you're given two pieces of data. So two points of information, which means basically you can find the equation, the slope, the starting value. So let's look at the slope of this line. So you can either use the slope formula or you can do first differences. So 5085 minus 3285, that's $18. 20 minus 12, that's eight. So the slope is 18 over eight. And it's a dollar question, so I'm always going to reduce to two decimal places. That's 225. And it was dollars and N. So therefore, it's $2.25 per rose. So now you can do whatever you want from here because it's multiple choice. If you know it's 225 per rose, I'm sure you can find the cost for the vase. I'm just going to continue to show you in a more formal way and say that the cost equals $2.25 per rose 
plus the vase. And now we want to find out what the vase costs. So I'm going to take one of the points I know, 12, 32.85, and I'm going to sub that into this equation. So n is 12 and the cost is 32.85. So subbing it in would leave me with an equation where there's only one unknown value, oops, that should be plus, and that unknown value is the cost of the vase. So let's keep going. 12 times $2.25 is $27, right on the nose. So subtracting $27, I get this. The cost of the vase is $5.85. So to buy flowers at the store, you're going to pay $2.25 per rose and $5.85 for the vase they sit in. So there's my answer, 585, excellent. 27, if the diameter of a volleyball is three times the diameter of a tennis ball, which statement below is true? So two of the statements involve volume and two of them involve surface area. So let's talk about volume first. So here's the tennis ball and here's the volleyball. So if the radius of the tennis ball is R, then the volume, and again, look on your volume formula, is 4 pi R cubed divided by 3. Now, that's a tennis ball. The volleyball is three times the diameter. So instead of R, I have 3R. What would that mean about the volume? So 4 pi radius cubed divided by 3. But don't forget the radius this time is this, not R. It's 3R because it's triple what it was over here. So if I do that exponent, 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And then if you look at what I have here compared to what I have here, the only difference is that 27. So I'm going to, because everything's multiplied, I'm going to write that 27 out front. So 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. Remember, when you multiply, you can multiply in any order. So I'm going to take, so what I've done is I've taken this multiplied by 27 and just moved it to the front. So what I can see is that the volume of the tennis ball right here is exactly the same as I've written right here which means the volleyball is 27 times bigger in volume than the tennis ball because here's the tennis ball and the 27 times bigger gives me volleyball. So the volume of the volleyball is three times bigger? No, it's 27 times bigger. Cross that off. The volume of the volleyball is nine times bigger? Nope, it's 27 times bigger. Cross that off. So after all that lovely work in volume, I now have to erase it and talk about surface area. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Okay, here we go, surface area. Tennis ball, radius R, surface area is, look on your formula sheet, four pi R squared. Now the volleyball is triple the radius. So the surface area is four, four pi radius squared. And don't forget this time the radius is three R. So that squared, that exponent 2, 3 times 3 is 9, and r times r is r squared. So again, look at what I have, look at what I have over here. 4 pi r squared, 4 pi 9 r squared. So let's take that 9, move it out front, and then I can clearly see that here's the tennis ball surface area, and then multiply it by 9. So the volleyball is 9 times the surface area, of the tennis ball. And that's what C says, that the surface area is nine times the tennis ball. So the answer is C. Okay, so that's enough of video number four. I'll meet you in video number five.